we all like food, right? So let me ruin it with some of the strangest foods around the world and make sure you're not eating while watching this video because it might just make you lose your appetite. Unless, of course, you're eating some of the foods that are going to be in this video, which would be pretty awkward. Anyways, I don't want to get any comments saying that it's disrespectful to their culture or don't knock it till you try it. Then you'd be talking to a brick wall because sorry, but I don't really care. Anyway, first up on our list is shirako from Japan. I pray that I said that right. The ingredients include milt or sperm sacs of fish, typically cod, anglerfish, or pufferfish. I see what makes them anime what they anime now. Anyway, shirako is considered a delicacy in Japan and is often served steamed, grilled, or in soups. I'm sorry, I don't really care how you cook it, but it's a hard pass on unmade fish kits for me. They eat it because it has a creamy texture and is prized for its delicate flavor. Coming from Japan again, we have tuna eyeballs. Now I'm not as weirded out by this one because I have seen my Asian grandpa eat fish eyeballs once before, and the brain, so I think I can tolerate this one. The ingredients include exactly what it sounds like, of course. In Japanese cuisine, tuna eyeballs are sometimes cooked and served as a snack or in soups, which I think it's funny because uh, imagine you're eating something and it starts staring right back at you. They are believed to have originated as a way to utilize all parts of the fish and are considered a delicacy in some regions. Balut. Coming from the Philippines, it is a fertilized duck embryo that is boiled and eaten from the shell. That is like shoving a live chick into your mouth and just munching on that thing. Fried tarantulas. Like, why, why? Coming from Cambodia, tarantulas are typically deep fried and seasoned with spices. You could deep fry this in Livy Dunn's bath water for all I care. Spider legs are spider legs. Fried tarantulas are a traditional snack in Cambodia, particularly in the town of Sukhun. Maybe? Imagine Cambodia has their own Cheetos flavor called tarantula legs. <laughs> they are believed to have become popular during the periods of food scarcity. Okay, at least they have a reason to eat this. White ant egg soup in Laos. Why has it only been the Asian countries so far? The ingredients are, you guessed it, white ant eggs, cooked in a broth along with various herbs and sometimes vegetables. White ant egg soup is a traditional dish in Laos, where it is believed to have originated as a source of protein in rural areas. Imagine Laos Sam Suluk downing some white egg ant soup. Jellied moose nose coming from Canada. Finally, it's not an Asian country. The dish is made from the nose of a moose, which is boiled up until the meat is tender and then set in gelatin. Jellied moose nose is a traditional dish of indigenous people in Canada, particularly among the Cree and Inuit communities, which I find pretty cool, but it is still nasty because you are eating a moose's booger factory. Bajintang from Korea. Asia is definitely not beating the allegations with this dish because Bajintang is made with dog meat, vegetables, and various seasonings. Bajintang has a very long history in Korean cuisine and was traditionally consumed during the summer months for its perceived health benefits. Uh, where did Scruffy go? Well, we did have a BBQ happening today, so... I'm sorry, but I'm not even gonna try to say that. Anyways, it is known as corn smut. It is a type of fungus that grows on corn kernels. <laughs> what? Just eat the stupid corn then! Anyway, it has been consumed in Mexico since pre-Columbian times and is considered a delicacy in the Mexican cuisine. I thought you guys were good at making food. Arag is a traditional Mongolian drink made from fermented mare's milk. Arag has been consumed in Mongolia for centuries and is an integral part of Mongolian nomadic culture. Okay, that, that might be the least nasty so far. Coming from Italy is Kasu Marzu. It is a traditional Sardinian cheese made from sheep's milk that contains live insect larvae. Um, what the f- Kasu Marzu is considered one of the world's most bizarre cheeses and has a long history in Sardinian cuisine. But, but why though? Like, how did this become a thing? Like, some guy just had a block of cheese and another guy was like, Oh, I'm about to play an epic prank on this dude. Muck Tuck from Greenland is a traditional Inuit dish made from whale skin and blubber. It has been a staple food in Inuit culture for centuries and is rich in nutrients, necessary for survival in Arctic conditions. You know what? I might eat it. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but it might happen. 
Hakarl is a traditional Icelandic dish made from fermented shark meat, which seems a little less appealing than whale meat. Hakarl dates back to the times of the Vikings and is prepared by burying shark meat underground for several months to ferment it. Again, why with the preparations? Oh, this one has a cool name. Century egg. Also known as preserved eggs or thousand year old eggs, they are made by preserving duck, chicken, or quail eggs in a mixture of clay, ash, salt, quicklime, and rice holes for several weeks to several months. Why not just eat the egg normally? And who figured this all out? Century eggs have been consumed in China for centuries and are prized for their unique flavor and texture. Oh, of course it was the Chinese. Only they can live that long and have that much time to waste, making a slightly different egg. From Ukraine, salo is a traditional dish made from cured slabs of pork fat. I might just eat it. Even though it's just the fat, I think that might just make it a little better. Salo has been a staple food in Ukrainian cuisine for centuries and is often eaten raw, pickled, or fried. Okay, I might not just eat I might not eat it raw, but maybe fried, maybe fried. This one is from England, so you know it will be trash. Stargazy pie is a traditional Cornish dish made with sardines, eggs, and potatoes, topped with a pastry crust. What makes it distinctive is the fish heads that are left protruding from the pastry, appearing to gaze at the stars. Again, what the f- Stargazy pie is said to have originated in the village of Mousehole Cornwall in the UK as a tribute to a legendary fisherman named Tom Bacock. Hey, at least the dish and the history are cool, but I'm sorry, I don't like my food watching me eat it, and I especially don't like food that was made for a man named Bacock. The last one we have on our list is just straight up locusts from Israel. They are consumed as a source of protein in various parts of the world. Locusts have been eaten by humans for thousands of years and are mentioned in religious texts such as the Bible and Quran. In Israel, locusts are sometimes prepared by frying or roasting. I like to imagine that when Moses summoned the locusts in Egypt, they were just hungry. I found this topic to be very interesting and funny to research. I would also like to hear if you have eaten any of these food items, or if I mentioned your country in this video. I hope that you found this video entertaining, and I thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another episode.